Hey, this is Prack with IRPR MD, and today we'll be looking at a Galaxy S5, and we're going to do a screen replacement. This Galaxy S5 right here, as you can see, was dropped pretty hard, and um, the LCD as well as the glass is uh, shattered, and so in this case, we'll just have to get replaced with a whole new LCD. And so what I have here is a Galaxy S5 LCD. Customer wanted a white, so we're going to go ahead and do a white screen replacement on the Galaxy S5. And um, unlike the Galaxy S3 and S4, you cannot approach the repair just from strictly the back. You have to, at first, access it from the front. Uh, what you need is a heat gun and add enough heat right over here to the rim of it and then you will remove the glass but make sure this this flex cable down here you have to be careful for so let's go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and actually add heat to here and again you want enough heat hot enough that it feels like a hot asphalt uh, summer you know, high, high noon summer Temperature is probably like 160, 170. You don't want anything over that because it might damage the component inside. And so what I'm doing is adding enough heat here. The heat is there to loosen up the glue so you can pull up the frame. And since the... Um, Since the frame is pretty much damaged already, there's really not much you can do to damage the, the, the LCD since the glass and the LCD is already cracked. All you want to do is actually just pull this off. But again, we'll try to be careful in the process. Alright, so this is enough heat. And we're going to use a razor. I'm going to go ahead and access frame right here and what you'll need is in this case is just go ahead and just use the scraper tool because there's really nothing else to rescue. You do have flex cable however down here so let's go ahead and pull this out. Alright, Okay, so again, this one has already been damaged from from the drop. Both LCD and digitizer is damaged, so all we really want to do is just open up and replace the digitizer and LCD. But what we're trying to rescue is the touch cable. All right, so it's just like the S4. This is this this the home, the back, and the and the and the info button you want to protect. So what I'm doing is actually putting some pressure down here. Okay, that's so good. You can just pull it out now. Just be really careful um, with this process. As you can see, the home button's right here. And let's just go ahead and pull it out all around okay let's look over here and underneath here just be very careful there is a it's a chip right here just make sure the flex cable don't it's not damaging it and let's go ahead and add a little more heat Just pull it up carefully. The heat is loosening the glue. And just be really careful of these flex cable underneath. All right, these are sensors. And 
so we're pulling it carefully examining any kind of flex cable that's possible to damage I'm looking here now there's no more other flex cable on the bottom so we'll go ahead and pull up the the base of this this is the heat shield right here go ahead and lift it up carefully okay As any new device, when you repair it, if you don't know what's underneath, just be very careful as you're taking it apart. But the way I see it, it looks to me like the only thing you have to be sensitive about uh, is the cable that's attached to these part. And that's pretty much it, because everything else is behind the phone. The LCD and the digitizer are intact. As you can see right here, you don't need, you can go ahead and actually, um, detach the connector out by pulling it and so you don't need to access the back at all in this repair it's all front assembly so if you have a cracked screen LCD it's a fairly quick repair probably takes you less than five minutes once you get the hang of this I'm doing this in front of a video I'm trying to be careful so make sure that I have everything covered okay what you need to do now that you have this you want to make sure that there's no glass lying around that can, when you do put the new LCD in, that can cause a crack. So you've got to be very cognitive, be very careful not to damage any of these. And let's go ahead and next look at the flex cable here. Okay, uh, I'm clearing the LED out. Make sure the touch LED actually respond. I'm going to remove some of this glue off. Okay. And carefully with my thumbnail, scraping all these excess adhesive that we had before, lining this up to here. I believe this is a thermal sensor. To gauge the temperature of the screen, and if it gets too hot, it goes on safe mode. And this is a thermostat. If I'm wrong, correct me. All right, and so now what I'm doing is going around the edge, carefully exploring The frame making sure there's no glass that can cause any damage to this screen okay and so now the only thing I really have to rescue from the old one is the home button right here and that with a little heat on the heat gun will remove it just fine So again, the S5 really, you don't need to access the back to do the screen repair. It's come off fairly easy. The iPhone 6 is the same way. I mean, really, it's, these companies are making it so it's easier for the customer or even the service provider to repair. So if you guys own a repair shop, just gotta be aware that eventually these things will be so simple to repair that they might not need a repair shop anymore. Sorry for the bad news, guys. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the old home button right here. However, I do have a second screen to test too. So I got two Galaxy S3, I bought two screens, so I just want to make sure that both screens are usable. What I'm going to do is go ahead and test this screen out. And as you can see, I'm going to put the LCD connector to the logic board, the connector logic board. And 
see where I can go from there. I'm not going to remove the tape yet because this again, I'm just simply trying to test this out. To make sure both LCD works. I'll power it up. Oops, let me go ahead and put the everything back in. And now I want to power it up. Test the LCD before I put it together. All right, this LCD seemed to work just fine. Okay, so allow it to go to its process. It's loading up. But I believe, you know, if you do have a glass process where the LCD is still usable and you just buy the lens cover, I think the process for repairing is pretty much the same. You can separate the glass carefully. Let me go ahead and you can see the touch does work. I mean, I'm going to test the home button. Okay. All this other feature do work also. There you go. Back and home detail. Everything works on this screen. I'm going to go ahead and test my second screen out. Got my second screen here. I'm gonna test that out also. The Galaxy S5, when they built this, they built it to be watertight. So the way it's structured is that it's watertight. What you will need, because once you break it and put the new glass in, you introduce opportunity for water to actually seep in. So you'll need to get it to the original state. And my glue, which you can get from the store, from my eBay store in the link below, is called SGX, it's a digitizer glue. It is made from silicone and it is watertight. It's actually probably better than the original glue. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this glue on. Okay. And creating the watertight seal, I'm using my STX. Again, putting it around the corner, building a silicone seal. This is a really good glue to use because it's, uh, it's thermal resistant. If you guys are using double sided tape, you probably realize. It doesn't create the adhesion like the original product does, but however, this thermal one, my thermal silicone digitizer seal does an even better job and it guarantees a watertight seal. Get it from my store for about 15 bucks and I use it for my iPad and all my tablet, anything that requires for me to reseal. The double-sided tape does not do it because if you leave it in your car or the customer has it, exposed to heat, what you're going to have is this issue. Alright, so what I'm going to do is actually put this, this I'm going to re-glue this using a, using 77, Formula 77, spraying it a teeny bit on here, and I'm going to make sure this lines up right and re-adhering this sensor here to the phone and I do believe this is a thermal sensor okay now everything is nicely placed what I'm doing now is aligning the home button okay using my STX glue um, Creating a watertight seal. Putting a button right here. Okay, now. Aligning it right over where it's supposed to be, like that. And 
and go ahead and put the seal around like we have it here okay completely around here okay and to put the LCD in all you have to do is connect the connectors into place all right and then just align the top frame in okay power it on okay just has a little STX glue on it's just silicone so you can rub it off with alcohol but what we need to do just make sure the button recoil that's perfect the speakers are in place that's great and so what we need to do now is just go ahead and just put adhesive correction put tape on each corner okay using scotch tape just regular clear scotch tape here and I'm placing all these back in just having it flush the frame and pulling it down with scotch to keep the LCD connected okay and so just go ahead and you have, you have tape in each corner and what you need to do now is just put tape to hold it down in the center okay at this point you see the battery is kind of low so I'm going to go ahead and charge it uh, it takes about 20 minutes for the glue to set so again I'll be back in 20 minutes to unwrap this and clean it up okay so now it's been 20 minutes go ahead and remove the uh, glass I mean the tape from here okay tape from the screen and the 20 minutes will allow the SGX silicone seal to cure properly I would still advise your customer to probably wait a full day before they can actually start putting it into a case okay so we're gonna pull this off right here and let me go ahead and use electronic alcohol to clean the screen up in the front and clean the back Okay, and then we can go ahead and test this out. Power button, okay. Home button, slide, camera slide. All right, perfect. All right, this is Prac with our repair MD. Safe repair. Hey, this is Prak with iRepair MD, and today we'll be looking at a Galaxy S5, and we're going to do a screen replacement. This Galaxy S5 right here, as you can see, was dropped pretty hard, and um, the LCD as well as the glass is uh, shattered, and so in this case, we'll just have to get replaced with a whole new LCD. And so what I have here is a Galaxy S5 LCD. Customer wanted a white, so we're going to go ahead and do a white screen replacement on the Galaxy S5. And um, unlike the Galaxy S3 and S4, you cannot approach the repair just from strictly the back. You have to, at first, access it from the front. 
Uh, what you need is a heat gun and add enough heat right over here to the rim of it and then you will remove the glass but make sure this this flex cable down here you have to be careful for so let's go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and actually add heat to here and again you want enough heat hot enough that it feels like a hot asphalt uh, summer you know, high high noon summer the temperature is probably like 160 170 you don't want anything over that because it might damage the component inside and so what I'm doing is adding enough heat here the heat is there to loosen up the glue so you can pull up the frame And since the um, since the frame is pretty much damaged already, there's really not much you can do to damage the, the the LCD since the glass and the LCD is already cracked. All you want to do is actually just pull this off. But again. We'll try to be careful in the process. All right, so this is enough heat. And we're going to use a razor. Then we'll go ahead and access frame right here. And what you'll need is, in this case, is just go ahead and just use the scraper tool because there's really nothing else to rescue. You do have flex cable, however, down here. So let's go ahead and pull this out. All right. Okay, so in this repair, it's all front assembly. So if you have a cracked screen LCD, it's a fairly quick repair probably takes you less than five minutes once you get the hang of this I'm doing this in front of a video I'm trying to be careful so make sure that I have everything covered okay what you need to do now that you have this you want to make sure that there's no glass lying around that can when you do put the new LCD in that can cause a crack so you gotta be very cognitive be very careful not to damage any of these and let's go ahead and next look at the flex cable here okay uh, I'm clearing the LED out let's make sure the touch LED actually respond I'm going to remove some of this glue off okay and carefully with my thumbnail scraping all these excess adhesive that we had before lining this up to here I believe this is a thermal sensor to gauge the temperature of the screen and if it gets too hot it goes on safe mode and this is a thermostat if I'm wrong correct me All right, and so now what I'm doing is going around the edge, carefully exploring the frame, making sure there's no glass that can cause any damage to the screen. Okay, and so now the only thing I really have to rescue from the old one it's the home button right here and that with a little heat on the heat gun will remove it just fine so again the S5 really you don't need to access the back to do the screen repair it's come off fairly easy the iPhone 6 is the same way. I mean, really, it's 
these companies are making it so it's easier for the customer or even the service provider to repair so if you guys own a repair shop just gotta be aware that eventually these things will be so simple to repair that they might not need a repair shop anymore sorry for the bad news guys All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the old home button right here. However, I do have a second screen to test too. So I got two Galaxy S3. I bought two screens, so I just want to make sure that both screens are usable. What I'm going to do is go ahead and test this screen out. And as you can see, I'm going to put the LCD connector to the logic board, the connector logic board, and see where I can go from there. I'm not going to remove the tape yet because this again, I'm just simply trying to test this out to make sure both LCD works. I'll power it up. Oops, let me go ahead and put the everything back in and now I want to power it up test the LCD before I put it together all right this LCD seemed to work just fine okay so allow it to go to its process it's loading up But I believe, you know, if you do have a glass process where the LCD is still usable and you just buy the lens cover, I think the process for repairing is pretty much the same. You can separate the glass carefully. Let me go ahead and you can see the touch does work. I mean, I'm going to test the home button. Okay. All these other features do work also. There you go. Back and home detail. Everything works on this screen. I'm going to go ahead and test my second screen out. Okay. Got my second screen here. I'm going to test that out also. The Galaxy S5, when they built this, they built it to be watertight. So the way it's structured is that it's watertight. What you will need, because once you break it and put a new glass in, you introduce opportunity for water to actually seep in. So you'll need to get it to the original state. And my glue which you can get from the store, from my eBay store in the link below. It's called SGX, it's a digitizer glue. It is made from silicone and it is watertight. It's actually probably better than the original glue. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply this glue on. And creating the watertight seal, I'm using my STX. Again, putting it around the corner building a silicone seal this is a really good glue to use because it's uh, it's thermal resistant if you guys are using double sided tape you probably realize it doesn't create adhesion like the original product does but however this thermal one my thermal silicone digitizer seal does an even better job and it guarantee a watertight seal get it from my store for about 15 bucks and I use it for my iPad and all my tablet anything that requires for me to reseal the double-sided tape does not do it because if you leave it in your car or the customer has it exposed to heat what you're gonna have is this issue alright so what I'm gonna do is actually put this this I'm gonna re-glue this 
I'm using a using 77 Formula 77 spraying it a teeny bit on here and I'm gonna make sure this lines up right and re-adhering this sensor here to the phone and I do believe this is a thermal sensor okay now everything is nicely placed what I'm doing now is aligning the home button okay using my STX glue um, creating a watertight seal putting a button right here okay now aligning it right over where it's supposed to be like that and go ahead and put the seal around like we have it here okay completely around here so again this one has already been damaged from from the drop both LCD and digitizers damaged so all we really want to do is just open up and replace the digitizer and LCD but what we're trying to rescue is the touch cable all right so it's just like the S4 this is this this the home the back and the and the, and the info button you want to protect so what I'm doing is actually putting some pressure down here okay that's so go ahead and you can just pull it out now just be really careful um, with this process as you can see the home buttons right here and let's we'll just go ahead and pull it out all around okay Just look over here and underneath here just be very careful there is a it's a chip right here just make sure the flex cable don't it's not damaging it and let's go ahead and add a little more heat Pull it up carefully. The heat is loosening the glue. And just be really careful of these flex cable underneath. Alright, these are sensors. And so we're pulling it carefully, examining any kind of flex cable that's possible to damage. I'm looking here now, there's no other flex cable on the bottom. So go ahead and pull up the, the base of this. This is the heat shield right here. Go ahead and lift it up carefully. Okay. As any new device when you repair it, if you don't know what's underneath, just be very careful as you're taking it apart. But the way I see it, looks to me like the only thing you have to be sensitive about uh, is the cable that's attached to these part and that's pretty much it because everything else is behind the phone the LCD and the digitizer are intact as you can see right here you don't need you can go ahead and actually um, detach the connector out by pulling it and so you don't need to access the back at all